All right, guys, welcome back to Gilligan Phantom, where we turn this big old school bus into a tiny house. Today, we are installing an off grid lithium battery bank. It's going to allow us to not be plugged in and do everything like heating water, cooking. We got no propane on this thing, we got no diesel fired appliances. We are not necessarily going to be able to have air conditioning and heat just on the solar and battery bank, but everything else we're gonna be able to do. Stay tuned and let's install a battery bank. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm new to this. I'm an amateur. You can see what I do, get inspired by it, take it into consideration, learn from it, but know that I am not an expert. Okay. This box is just wrecked. That's my guy right there. All right, so we got the 24 volt, 3000 VA Victron Multi Plus. We've got fuses. These are Bay Marine. These go straight onto the battery post, 150 amp fuses. These are just to protect each string of batteries. This is four aught welding cable, 10 foot red, 10 foot black, 10 tin lugs and heat shrink. I got two of these. Then we got two 600 amp bus bars by Bay Marine. This is so that we can combine our batteries in a sensible way. We got covers and that's it. All this I actually bought on Amazon. Amazon had the best prices this time. If you end up buying this stuff and you wanna use my affiliate links below, I would greatly appreciate it and thank you. Nate's here. Hi. His voice has kind of changed probably since you saw him last. Nova's here. We cute? <laughs> okay, so we do have some work to do. Let me show you what I did yesterday and what we got to work on today. All right, so a lot has changed in here. We now have six 12 volt, 105 amp hour Lion Energy batteries. I can't see you. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Should we get to work? Okay. By the way, if you are not one of the 53600 subscribers that are currently subscribed to this channel, hit that subscribe button. Duh. All right guys, so let me explain what we gotta do. We gotta wire these batteries up. We're gonna be putting them in series by connecting the positive and negative terminals, and then in parallel by taking each negative and each positive and attaching them to a really big bus bar. And then from the bus bar, the battery bank goes up into the combiner box. Yes. I'm not see? insisted on putting this battery in yourself. Let me see. Perfect. Can I lose it? No, but can I give you this phone in a minute? Yeah, but I don't mind. Okay, you wanna watch me work? Yes. Okay, so we're about to series connect these batteries. And then that is going to take this 12 volt battery and this 12 volt battery and turn it into one 24 volt battery. But before we do that, we need to make sure that the voltage, basically how much energy is in the battery is pretty much the same. So luckily these guys, even though they're at 60% are at 13.2120 volts on this one, 13.21 on this one. So I've already checked every single one of these. They're all 13.21, which means I can start making battery cables and connecting these together. Okay, so we're using four aught welding cable to make our battery connections. This stuff has a maximum of around 450 amps that can flow through it. So this kind of like, this is the sort of the biggest cable we can put on here. We can probably get away with a little bit less, but this kind of future proofs us. But I'm using this right now to jump in series and I wanna use the least amount of cables I can. So I'm gonna get the tightest arc that I can. So I measured this lug, it's about three quarters of an inch deep. So I've marked about three quarters of an inch on here and I'm gonna use PVC snips to try and cut this cover off without doing any damage to the strands below. All right, that seems okay. Okay, watch out, Nova. What? I don't 
don't know. Okay. All right, so that was my first time doing that. We're probably good. I'm gonna crimp the other one the same way. Come here, Nova. Uh, come here. So this is my first time crimping with this uh, dead blow mallet type crimper. This thing does get really good reviews on Amazon and it's only 20 bucks. I think we're good. Let's heat shrink this and let's put it on and let's see if we're happy with it. Is it hot? No, not too bad actually. All right, so that's battery cable number one. Let's go put a battery in series. I bought this crescent wrench. It's got a rubber cover for this handle. I did that because if you were to have this wrench drop between this positive and negative terminal, it would short this battery and cause a big spark. So you gotta be really careful working with these. But if you've got a cover for your wrench, you should be okay. So I'm just like afraid if I have something wrong. Well, I guess you won't know unless you try. Okay. It's just if you did it on the same battery. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Woo! That was close. Almost died. Now I can test this out. We should have like more than 24 volts. And we do, we have 26.3. Nice, zero. Zero, I guess that's normal. So we just gotta do that two more times. So one more reason I wanted to make these as short as possible is if for some reason this came loose because of how short it is, it can't contact. If this came loose and contacted that, it would short out the battery. That'd be a big problem. Now to be putting these batteries in parallel, I'm gonna be connecting each of the negatives together, each of the positives together. And that's gonna turn this 24 volt, 105 amp hour battery into 24 volt, 315 amp hours. There is a couple ways to do this. The first thing you could do is you could put a cable between here and here and here and here, and then run this back to your charge controller and then on the other side you do the opposite battery this back to the charge controller the problem is these batteries will not be depleted at the same rate they're going to get worn out at different rates and i'm not sure if they're going to give the absolute top capacity there's other ways to wire in parallel that also work to better your odds at depleting your battery bank in a normal way. But what I'm doing is sort of the expensive lazy version. I don't know if it's lazy, but it's expensive because this is a 600 amp bus bar and it costs $85. So I'm gonna be putting this here and all of the negative connections and all of the positive connections are gonna be paralleled in the bus bar. And the important thing to note here is that each of my parallel cables are going to be the same exact length as each other. Maybe yes. green. It's the yellow one. It's cardboard. It says deck mate. Grab it. Uh, ah? Yes. Yes. You got it. Can I have it? Thank you. You were so helpful. Okay, so I just redid these bus bars. I just moved them further this way because if I end up adding two more batteries, the cable length would have been too long on this side and it wouldn't have matched that side. So now I have this lined up in the perfect center between the one, two, three, and number four hypothetical battery poles. And that way this length will be this length as well. So if I figure out what the right length is for that, then I'll make one, two, three battery leads the same length. Okay, so I've made my first parallel battery connection. Okay, so that's on there. See how this lug and this lug are 90 degrees from each other? I had to do that so that this would be a nice clean connection. Nummies. You have a good time working on the bus? Okay, good. You like the bath? <laughs> all right so this negative side of the bank is put into parallel these guys are all the same length yep I got an okay see out here it sounds solid now right it sounds yeah. like one solid piece metal an all right now let go and just slam that thing boom again boom one more time nice all right so the positive side is wired up to match the negative side the battery is now in series and parallel and that's how you put
Batteries and series in parallel. Ta-da! Wait, hold on a second. Who's top? You are. I'm taller still. My days are numbered. Mm. It feels shorter than you. Wow. Yeah. Nah, it's because my forehead's so long. <laughs> so this is how our inverter is gonna sit. I'm going to bring up the battery cable through a hole that I'm gonna make right there, and then along this into here. Okay. Uh, vacuum. All right, so this is fun, Nate. Yep. This looks like a evil scientist lab. Okay. This goes here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just like that. Okay. And then, shoot, let's just shoot it all through. All right, okay, okay. Oh my gosh, why am I making my life hard? Slammy. All right, let's go slam this together. Shoot the hell this thing doing it. Can I squish you a little bit? I just gotta say, I got a newfound love for electrical work and plumbing. You guys doing good over here hey, now? what do you think? Do you wanna look at it? They're all wired together. Wow. I got a little bit of a problem. Each battery, the positive parallel connection, I was supposed to fuse it with a 150 amp fuse. I forgot to do that. I still have the fuses here in packaging, so. All right, so have a look here, and I have fused every single battery. Hopefully they don't blow because I don't have any spares. Probably should buy some. Now, I got this cable right here. The battery bank's all wired up. So power line goes to my solar charge controller, comes out to my shunt, goes to my... Oh God, I'm confused. Okay, but look, I'm just gonna flip some breakers over here and see what happens. This one I feel like sends power to my charge controller, so. All right, charge controller is alive now. Battery voltage, 26.1. Okay guys, so I did a couple things here. First of all, I unplugged this, which is my AC to DC converter, which means that my lights turned off. Now, I just temporarily placed these positive and negative leads coming from the charge controller on here. I also still have my pump connected. Now, if I flip these two breakers, my lights come on, my pump works, and just so you know, my lights don't flicker anymore because the pump is on a different fuse block than the lights. That's what was causing the lights to flicker. Uh, somebody tipped me off on that a while ago. I just never had an opportunity to prove it. Thank you for watching. Please email me with questions or comments, gilliganphantom at gmail.com. I almost always respond and I always read them. If you need help, maybe I can help you. I don't know, let me know. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. Oh yeah, next video, I'm gonna be installing this inverter, which is gonna power our AC system and things are gonna get really cool. Okay, see you tomorrow.